guys, I don't want the success because I want to buy a fucking Lamborghini. I want a success so I can make more figures and more comics and more more cool stuff. That's why I want to succeed so I can do art. Todd McFarlane, it is always great to see you. Uh, look, congratulations. I know you're about to celebrate 30th anniversary on your uh, Todd McFarlane, McFarlane toys, which I'm a huge fan of. I have, oh, I have my Aquaman toys over there, but I should have just brought them out. Anyway, um, I wanted to start off talking about Spawn, though. Spawn um, is never going to reissue numbers, but issue 350 is a fantastic jumping on point for new readers. What can we expect from issue 350 and how will that affect King, Spawn, Gunslinger, and Scorched? Yeah, so it seems like like 350 shouldn't be a good spot to jump on, but it actually it actually is um, because and and although it seems a little bit wieldy, the it's finishing up a story that you could argue began in issue 100, right? Sure. So people go, "What? I'm 250 issues behind." No, it's it's in issue 100, Spawn killed his maker. Right. And he sat on the throne of hell and it's been vacant for 250 issues throughout those 250 issues. I've, I've mentioned it throughout the storyline. And so is some of the other writers, but we've mentioned it. I'm just saying it's vacant. It's vacant. It's vacant. Um, and it's only been recently that there's been a concentrated effort for somebody to now fill it. Um, that's what 350 is. 350 is basically all you need to know as a new reader the throne's empty. People have been scrumming for it for 250 issues. And in this issue, somebody's finally going to sit in it, right? So that's all the information you need. You don't have to go read the last 250 issues. If you want to buy the trades, go ahead. God bless you. Uh, but that's it. So you're going to get the big answer. Who sits on who sits upon the throne? It's so funny because that literally leads into my next question. Yeah, uh, and now, and, but, the, but the thing is, which is why it's a good jumping on point, you get this big, giant answer to what we've been building up in the books literally for the last couple of years, but overall in, in sort of a, a big arch, uh, you know, for 250 issues, but you get the answer. So, so you go, boom, I got this answer. Everybody else had to read 250. I just had to read this one and I got the answer. Sort of like seeing the, the highlights on ESPN, right. you get the winning touchdown without having to watch the whole game. Sure. Um, so, so you get that answer and then the reason it's a good spot because the answer to that question has repercussions moving forward for earth. Right. So it does affect all the other books going forward. So if all of a sudden you're reading the other books going, Hey, something's a little off. It's because of what happened in 350. So you can go, Oh, I see what happened. And now I, now I'm going to start reading the new consequence of whoever's sitting on the throne moving forward. And it's going to, it's going to touch all the books, not in a big giant way, not in a way that you have to buy all the issues or any of that, but just if things are different, then you go, Oh, it was that 350 moment. So we definitively will have somebody sitting on that throne uh, in 350, correct? At the end, at the end. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited about that. Now, we also have a new interior artist taking over. Brett Booth joins the book. Uh, yeah. Why was he the right choice? And what are you excited for fans to see with his artwork? It's actually, Brett, Brett being on the, on the book is me constantly checking in with my artist. And, and so Brett had been on uh, Gunslinger for a while. Sure. And, and Carlo Barbary had been on Spawn for a while. And I, you know, part of keeping artists around is having them enjoy their work. And sometimes, although you, you know, you enjoy doing a character, after a while you can say, hey, I'm, I'm looking for just a little bit, something different in my diet, right? Sure. So, so what I, I, I thought would work, and, and I talked to both Brett and to Carlo, is hey, you've done a bunch of Spawn, Carlo, and he's done a bunch of Gunslinger. I've seen a little bit of Brett do Spawn. He does a really good Spawn. And I've seen you do a Gunslinger. You do a killer Gunslinger, Carlo. Why don't, why don't we swap? Um, given that it's also going to be an anniversary and people are going to be coming on, hopefully, as a starting on point, and then 
you become the new gunslinger guy, Carlo, and he becomes the new spawn guy. And you guys both get a little bit of freshness in the pages. And it's not just the same thing you've been drawing for the last few years. Now, both of them are really dedicated workers, right? And and both of them are, are just such kind, talented gentlemen that they're like, I'll just, I, I can stay on the book and keep doing more if you want. Like, and, But I'm always sort of leery that it's like by the time you do burn them out, it's too late to get them. So I was just being a little proactive of saying, hey, let's make the swap. So both Brett and Carlo are on issue 350. It's a 40-page 40, 40, 40 book, right? It's a... Uh, it's, it's 40 pages for four ninety nine. I, oh. again, I just, I just did a, a thing on my Instagram. It's going to be the best value you're going to get this year. 40 pages. For oh yeah. Like there's a bunch of comic books that are 20 pages that are four ninety nine right now. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a free comic book basically compared to their price prices. But, uh, so it's going to be a 40 pager and then, and then Brett will then stay on spawn and Carlo moves over to gunslinger. It's absolutely incredible. Now, there's a few books I want to highlight that are coming out. Look, I was a big fan of Jimmy Palmiotti's run on Jonah Hex in D.C. I think he has such a great way of telling these fantastic Western stories. Now he's joining the Spawn universe with uh, Deadly Tales of the Gunfighter. What insight can you tell us about Deadly Tales of the Gunfighter? Um... I don't know. Is it the gunfighter or gunslinger? I don't know what we call it. Oh, I'm sorry. Gunslinger. Did I say gunfighter? I meant gunslinger. Gunslinger is, you know, again, we call it gunslinger spawn, but I just like to call him gunslinger because I want him to have his own identity. Um, Gunslinger is in modern times right now in his own book, the one I write. And so, um, but he's popular and there's a lot of backstory still to be told, a lot of history to be told of like when he was back in pre-Civil War time. Sure. And, and I didn't want to keep using the regular book to sort of keep doing flashbacks, right? Because you can only do that so much and you're going back and forth. And I don't want to send mix, mixed messages. So when Jimmy came along, and again, he had that big long run, as you mentioned on uh, Jonah Hack, right? Um, that it was like, oh, well, well we all sort of, came to the idea, why don't we why don't we just do a book that is modern, which is the one I'm doing with 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 Brett and now Carlo, Barbara. Um, and then you can go off and do your thing, Jimmy, and tell those Western stories. And we don't have to feel like we gotta rush it and then pull it back into my time. So there can be sort of the old book and the new book with this character that I think sort of fits both times and has interesting stories on both of it. So that's that was sort of how we got there. And, and Jimmy, you know, sort of one of the perfect choices because he's done those kinds of stories for so long and so well. Talking about another perfect choice, this seems like the perfect match. Spawn the Dark Ages is, is returning after 25 years with artist writer Liam Sharp. This book takes place in the fifth century uh, Britain. What else can you share about the return of Spawn the Dark Ages? Yeah, Liam actually did some covers uh, way back when on the original one, right? So he, he sort of poked his head out and it was like, what, Liam? Like, I, I didn't even know he even remembered he did it. Um, but he came to us and said, hey, I've got this idea about the Dark Ages. I never sort of stopped thinking about it, but I'd like to write it myself. And he sort of pitched it to us, showed us a couple pieces of art. And I go, man, that, that looks cool, right? Again, Medieval Spawn's another guy that got pulled. All these characters got pulled forward. They all have this history from where they came from. Sure. And I need to be able to give room for it. I also think that Medieval Spawn done right can can be, I think, a very popular character just in that sort of Game of Thrones Lord of the Rings mentality. And then from time to time, I you see him do his thing in modern times. But I, I we haven't really dove into his past sure. uh, as much as we can. And that's basically what Liam wants to do. So and it's going to be gritty. It's going to be dark and gritty and dirty, right? Which is what that time period is uh, visually. Um, and so, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. What can you tell me about Medieval Spawn by Rory McConville? Again, Rory's another guy. He's doing Spawn right now uh, 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 on the Spawn book. And I was having a conversation with him. I'm just saying, I, I, I think 
I think that medieval could be kind of like my Thor, if you will. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, this sort of mythological character, but he's in modern time. Um, and so there's some stories we have to fill in the backstory, but I also want to make him his own person in a big way, even in modern times, right? Um, without him having to be a guest star on a team and or a couple pages in Spawn or whatever else, right? I don't want all my books to be team books, team right. books, which is why we started The Scorch, because it's like, hey, we can go there, but Spawn, I think Spawn works best alone. I think Gunslinger works best alone. And to some extent, I also think that that's true for Medieval. He just doesn't have his own pages to be able to show that off. And so uh, Rory has got a story that hopefully he will sort of up the the value and the ranking of Medieval Spawn amongst some of the, the fans and who they think is their favorite Spawn. Now, I want to talk about, uh, talk about the Spawn movie for a second, because I know you'll be reading the script this month at some point by Brian Tucker. Um, what elements are needed? No, no, the, the, no, no, the script would be by um, um, uh, Scott Silver. Scott Silver. Uh, there's a couple, there's like, a, there's a three of them. They started and they're bouncing it around, right? Matt, Matt Mixum and uh, Malcolm Spellman. Um, so, uh, and, and Scott Silver is the Joker writer. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mal Malcolm's the the Captain America Winter Soldier writer. Um, so again, two heavy hitters. Oh, yeah. Doing their thing. And then, and then Matt is coming on to help give a voice uh, that, you know, because we sometimes you need a little bit of youth in in the puzzle, right? As we all get a little bit older. Uh, but yeah, they've been throwing the script back and forth, doing their their thing. They're the pros, right? And and they're just pushing it all together here. Now, what elements do that do, does there need to be to get Spawn right for the big screen adaptation this time around? Interesting question because. Arguably, our answer and a studio answer might be two different two different things. Um, we, the one thing that I'm excited about is that in my conversations, uh, and mostly with uh, Scott Silver, um, that he is just hell bent, uh, and I and I, I don't say that as a pun, literally of wanting to do something different, right? Every conversation, he just is like, I, I, we just can't do Marvel light. We can't yes. do, I just, we've got it. And, you know, and, 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 you go, and, and, you know, again, we don't want to just go, and he doesn't want to do like horror because that like sort of is its own thing. He goes, he's just fighting to try and see if we can do something slightly different we'll let the audience i've always said when you try to do something different you let the audience decide whether that's better or worse right right and they're the paying customer but he said something to me the other day that i thought was almost perfect that he said i want to do a story that's dangerous and he didn't mean it he didn't mean it in that there's danger in the story sure per se he meant that it was that it would it would be a little bit of a risk to do this movie because it's not going to fall into an easy formula. Right. And I'm all for that. Right. I'm, I'm all for trying something different in his word, dangerous. Like that's music to my ear again. Yeah. Do people who spend a lot of money making movies, do they want something that's dangerous? I don't know. We're going to find out. <laughs> I, I mean, if they read the script and it's as strong as we're all hoping it to be, they should have some big curiosity and hopefully appetite to go, oh, my God, this is a little bit different. <laughs> Look at Right now, we're seeing potentially a little bit of a lull in the formula of superhero movies. And it might just be good timing to just go, yes, everybody wants to know how do you tweak the formula that's getting maybe a little soft. And 
you 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 need the right character to be able to try something different. And I think Spawn's built for that, right? He's not he's not Superman who's perfect and you can't then go, hey, well, let's try this or right. this because his his box isn't that that big per se. Spawn is still relatively unknown, kind of outside the bubble of geekdom, you know, and to make a movie successful, you're going to have to sell it to a lot of people who don't know or have never read a single comic book before. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know. We have, we, I, again, we all, fingers crossed, we're all, we all have high hopes to do something at a time that's slightly different at a time when people are maybe looking for something slightly different. Right. So yep. sometimes, I mean, I don't know who knows we might be done right at the, the, at the right place, the right time. And that could help. I, I don't know. We don't, we don't control all of it. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously you need the studios and everything to get in, but that's, that's the recipe we're all looking for right now. It's like you're in my brain because you literally answered my next question because I feel that that's exactly what the genre shakeup kind of needs is something dangerous because you're right. You know, the, the, the box office numbers haven't really been there the last year or two for those superhero movies. And I think that that's something unique and completely different, a completely different approach may be the way to do that. I hesitate to use big words like unique, right? Um, but but different. Yeah, right? just just di- just different. And oh, by the way, the formula that is there is still a very successful formula. I'm 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 not saying that that shouldn't exist. It just should be and like there should be some satellite add-ons around it for when you want to try other stuff, right? We all go through it. I mean, we we do it in comic book. We 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 sort of for the most part start. And we read our superhero. Sometimes we start at Archie, and 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 then we graduate to superhero comic books, Marvel and DC, and we devour and devour. I did the same. I collected all of it, and then you get to a certain age where then you're starting to look for like something like Saga yep. or The Walking Dead. Again, not on a steady diet, but you add it to your superhero reading, and then all of a sudden it's like what used to be a hundred percent to zero now becomes like 90, 10. And then as you get a little bit older, then it's like, oh, now maybe it's 70, 30, right? Sure. You start to evolve of being, I like both, but as I get a little bit older, I, I don't just want all of one thing. I want to sort of experiment and, and try different things. So uh, yeah, we'll see. And I, I, I think it's, like I said, I think it's good timing for it. Is Jamie Foxx still attached to the project? And I also know that Jeremy Renner was uh, was rumored to be on the project, but Jamie Foxx is still attached? Here's the thing about Hollywood is you have people at certain times that are attached, right? And you, but, but again, there's also scheduling. So the sure. one thing that, I mean, again, I, I could want the greatest director, but if, they say you've got a go project and you've got a window and you've got to shoot it in this time and that director isn't available. Then you go, oh man, you only got two choices. You either wait or you have to go to your, your, your other choices or whatever else, right? We're all hoping, fingers crossed, that the team that we assembled at the beginning will still somehow all be involved, but we'll have to let it all play out. Right. Sure. And because and, and, and again, I think those big decisions ultimately are <laughs> the people spending a hundred million bucks are gonna be the ones that are, are gonna dictate it. But uh Jamie, Jamie's my guy, right? So until somebody tells me otherwise, Jamie's my guy. Now I want to switch gears uh and talk about uh McFarland Toys. Congratulations on the 30th anniversary. What are you what will you guys be doing to celebrate that 30th anniversary at McFarland Toys? And some of it will be sort of dipping back into our history to remind people that we've been around this long, right? I mean, again, if you were if you were just born when our first toy came out, you're you're an adult and and are 30 years old. <laughs> so um that's a long time. And you may have missed out on some of the cool things that we did. So we're gonna we're gonna go back, dive into some of the brands that we did, um uh, go back and do a wink to some of the original packaging that we did. Uh, the look that people sort of got excited about those first four or five years of going, oh man, um, you know when, when you know when we started, we were sort of swimming in the in 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 the ocean by ourselves, 
right? You know, like nobody else was really doing sort of collector adult stuff sure. in, a, in a meaningful way. Um, and and then and since you know us sort of coming upon the 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 world with our toys that it's inspired you know dozens of other companies to do it so there, you know there are brilliant companies making terrific toys out there which is which was always my master plan right it was like if if I can sort of show that you can do it and make it successful others will follow and that means that toys will get better. And I'm a geek. I like to collect stuff. That means more stuff for me. It doesn't have to, I don't have to make it all. I, I'll let other people make it. So uh, it's sort of kind of worked the way that I want it. Uh, that that you now go to Toy Fair, you go to, you know, San Diego Comic Con, New York Comic Con, and you see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of brilliant toys that are out in the marketplace. Um, so we're just going to sort of do a little bit of a tip back to our our original history and and have a little bit of fun with that. You know, I love the DC multiverse figures. I think that they are the best figures for the price point. They look gorgeous on my shelf. I should have I should have brought my shelf in here because I have them all stacked up. It's so cool. I haven't opened my Aquaman ones yet. But the last time we spoke, we discussed expanding the DC multiverse line with movie figures from the past. And we've done that. The Batman and Robin figures are gorgeous. They're absolutely gorgeous. I'm getting mine next week. So I can't wait to have them in hand. Um, are there any other plans to, to to kill or still expand that with uh, maybe more Arrowverse figures from like Legends of Tomorrow or Black Lightning? We you recently uh, we just recently saw the Ben Affleck Batman uh, BVS uh, costume uh, th that figure's coming out soon. So what else is down the pipeline when it comes to the uh, some of the cinematic and television shows from DC's past? A couple things. One, sometimes there are starts and stops of what we can and can't do. Right uh, via our contract, and who who's willing to sign off uh, on talent, whether they even have the rights for some of the talent. Uh, it could, took a long time even to do like you know Adam West because you know there was some legal issues there. So we're, we're constantly asking those questions, and yes, it's cool when you do stuff that is based on like TV and movie and whatever else. But interestingly, the data still shows that if you do a good figure that's just based on the character, whether it's derived from a look in the comic book directly or not, but just sort of in terms of the romantic version of that character, um, those, for the most part, out, outsell sort of the, the movie versions wow. um, of it. And, and maybe it's because you don't have to have a specific knowledge of it. I agree. I think the the Batman Robin toys came out really nice, some nice likenesses. Um, even the, the build a figure. Yeah, that was, Mr. Freeze build a figure looks amazing. Right. So I mean like it's one of and again, this is that frustrating part about making toys when you you go, man, that's Schwarzenegger. Why can't we do this with all of our faces? Right. Um, so again, making toys is a very inexact science. So we're we'll be we'll be going through and we've constantly gone through some of the stuff you're thinking about and then adding it and asking, are we better off with that? Or is there's this cool character we haven't made yet or a variation of a character we haven't made yet uh, that's from the comic book video games or someplace else that we can put out there. So uh, there'll be more for sure. It just, you know, it, I, I don't know that we're going to go, hey. Let's do 50 movie TV things in sure. a row before we go back. So it's going to be a mixture. I just saw today and it got me really excited. The Crisis on Infinite Earths figures, uh, just the pictures just dropped on Instagram. I cannot wait. That Earth 2 Superman, Kid Flash, we got the Spectre. Um, and there was another one. There was one more that I just saw. Uh, I miss, I'm blanking on, on who else I just saw. But I said there's four of them that I that I know that are coming out. Um, God, they look gorgeous, Todd. I cannot wait for those figures. Um, is you're going through it in your head too? The library, I mean, look about DC Comics has been around since 19, you know, 36, right? Yeah. The, the action comics number one, right? That vault, and they've opened it to us. That vault is is, I mean, I'll die before I even get halfway through that <laughs> vault, right? So it's the frustrating part. So there are so many 
characters still to sort of dive into. And while you're doing it, they're Warner Brothers, who owns DC, are making video games and more video games, TVs, movies, and other things. We can, they just keep adding to the pile that we're never going to climb to the top of the pile. They keep adding to it. And so it can be a bit overwhelming because there are literally tens of thousands of options. Um, and that's what we go through as we're trying to call through some of it. And yes, I know it can be frustrating because everybody has their favorites and they're like, man, I got this guy, especially once you get down to the, the sort of less than sort of all-star team, right? Then everybody has their personal favorite. And when you don't do them, then you get the email. Right? For sure. How come you're not doing this guy, right? Or this gal or this character or this villain or whatever. Um, but we'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll just keep pumping them out and hope, hopefully, you know, having a decent response so we can keep doing it. When I saw that Earth 2 Superman, I about freaked out. It looks so gorgeous. I cannot wait for that figure to hit my shelf. Now, something that really excites me that was announced earlier was your new partnership with Hasbro and expanding the Page Puncher line. Um, we'll be getting Transformers, G.I. Joe, Dungeons and & Dragons, and the one that excites me the most is Power Rangers. Uh, will these be in the 6-inch line or the 7-inch uh, scale? We're going to start small to, st to start with, with the Page punchers and then and then we'll expand uh the sizes on a couple of them because we have sort of restrictions on some of them sure. that we can and can't do as you can imagine because uh there are things there but it's more of sort of jumping in and playing with some brands that are well known especially in the toy side um and seeing whether we can do something meaningful and and if that works then what normally happens is the people who give you the contract, you then ask for more favors, if you will. And then they're like, well, that last thing worked. Hey, let's try it. Uh, and so uh, you, you were at the beginning of it and every sort of relationship we end up having that's a little bit new, you, you learn to walk before you run. Sure. Sure. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna walk, and then if it all works out, then I'm then both parties get excited, and they and we both come up with razzle dazzle ideas, and we keep going. So uh, we'll 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 start it as paid punchers, and we'll go from there. Right? Success breeds success. Right? Uh, so, which is why, again, you know, it, at times where people are like, oh, Todd, you know, you you know, you just money hungry or celebrity driven or whatever it is you want to say i don't get and it's okay you can have your opinion the answer if you were in my brain you would know that's actually not true um the reason that i need success and i've said it a thousand times the reason that i need success and if part of the success means that i've got to go out there and promote my companies and myself to do and help that success means that when you're successful they'll let you do it again yes and if you're in the art business and you do it on a regular basis, you have to do it again and again and again and again to the point in Spawn, we're up to 350 again, because we've got issue 350. They don't give you chances to do it again if you don't succeed. This is the piece. Like, guys, I don't want the success because I want to buy a fucking Lamborghini. I want a success so I can make more figures and more comics and more more cool stuff. That's why I want to succeed, so I can do art. Uh, oh, by the way, if you're successful, the byproduct is money, right? So right. Th that just comes as doing it right. But I like, yes, you're not going to have a 40, 50, 60 year career doing something in any field if you don't have some momentum behind you. So I, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm gonna, I make no apologies for us trying to succeed. Nobody else should, and no, neither should anybody else who's trying to advocate for their career. Couldn't agree with you more. Now, look, personal question, because I love Power Rangers. I absolutely love Power Rangers. Are we starting off with the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, then hopefully expanding out through the other seasons? Yeah. Yes. And so, then, and and then Transformers. I'm assuming we're gonna start off with the G1s, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dungeons and Dragons, are those going to be based on the tabletop game or the film? No, the tabletop. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. 
Dude, yeah, that- yeah. Again, I mean, we're you know, again, we're going to try and make it sort of retro. I mean, again, what you know, again, a, l- a little bit of like, oh man, cool, right? Like, oh yeah, I remember this, right? Oh, I remember those brands. I remember that look. I remember. Th- just make it fun. Bring a little bit of fun to it, and then we can start. Like I said, having the conversations with Hasbro and and our side, and just going, oh, how how do we how do we expand each one of these, right? But you have to get that first step of success to keep going, right? Yes. I mean, we, we may find, in all honesty, we may find we put out a bunch and we and there's more demand for one of those brands than another. No harm, no foul. I mean, we'll, sure. make, we'll make more of them than, than other ones. Okay, cool, right? It, we do, we sort of do the same when we were doing sports. Did way more New York Yankees than we did Florida Marlins, right? Of course. Yep. Now, uh, I want to talk about the bi-monthly whatnot charity event. What can you tell me about that? I've been aware of whatnot. I mean, and 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 I understand it, and I I I know why people use it. I sometimes come to like meetings, and I and I'm trying to figure out how to get involved and or use something, but I don't have the same need as others. Sure. So sometimes the rules that apply to 90% of people don't apply to me. Um, so it's like, yeah, I could go, I could go on whatnot every day and grab whatever I've got sitting around. Right. Like, shit, I, here's a good comic book here. I could sign it and send it out um, and, and make 40 bucks, whatever. I don't need 40 bucks. Right. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I've got, I've got lots of money. Uh, I don't need money. Uh, what I do need, what I think is actually the, the most valuable currency is I need an audience. And, and so the question is, how do you build an audience? And I, I, for me, there, I think that you come up with some consistency, you know, which is why we're up to 350 issues of Spawn. Um, you give people quality and and you give it to them at a fair price and you don't take advantage of them, right? If they're going to support you, you don't say, oh, man, they're supporting us and buying something for 10 bucks. Let's go to 15 bucks. Like sometimes we can't help ourselves because our costs go and we get pushed on. But, if you know, I think our toys are reasonably priced. Yes. I, I, I know that our comic books are the cheapest on the market, right? To the point I'm going to do a 350 double sized issue, give you 40 pages for the price that people are giving you 20 pages. Like I'm giving you twice as much at the same price. Could I charge an extra dollar or two and probably sell the same amount? Probably. But who's that? Who like the only person that gains is me. I get more money. I don't need more. I just told you I don't need more. And, and, and who does it hurt? The end consumer. Like why? Why do I need two two extra bucks from them? Sure. That two extra bucks, they can spend it on something else. Maybe buy another comic book. I don't know. And and I think that if you treat the customer in a fair manner like that, I think that they'll be loyal to you. Right? Oh yeah. You know, Paul's not trying to pick our pocket. He's not trying to basically get us. He's not doing an event book every you know six months. He's not trying to do this thing on Kickstarter all the time and doing it. So that's a long winded way of going back to whatnot and just saying, dudes, I'll use it the odd time. If we got something, we need to make a buck here and there. Cause again, I got bills to pay, but I think what would be cooler is for us to make money and, and, and give it to people who need it more than us. Right. So why don't we take the community and say, Hey, here's a book. Normally we charge five bucks. We're putting it up for auction. You can pay five bucks, but just so you know, if you happen to go to six or seven, all the money, all the money is going to this charity, whatever it happens to be that day. And right. again, trying to pick stuff that I think we can all agree upon, right? Charities that we can all agree upon that that don't have a partisan bent to it, that it's sure. just like, yeah, that 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 seems cool. Uh, and and go there, and so it's like, yeah, I've got so much stuff lying around that is just hanging there. If we can convert it into money to help people, other people pay it forward a little bit, 
why not? Right. So why not? Uh, so that's it. Just just trying to see if there if if that platform is will work for that. And if not, we'll try. I mean, what what not to me is I've said before is just another experiment. It, you know, it 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 may work better than I think. It may work less, or we may need to tweak it along the way. But but that's it. Just want to have fun and 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 engage myself with the audience, which is way more important. And then. Uh, raise money for good causes. Now, the last question I have for you is I wanted to talk about Sponuary 2024 cover challenge. Um, I think that's such a cool thing for the audience, for our audience that may not know exactly what that is. Can you explain it to them? Yeah. And I may, I may not even get it right, but we're doing, we're doing a contest in which you hand in your artwork. I'm going to pick the winners and the winners will get their artwork on one of my comic books you will so again there may be people who are pros that that submit okay fine I, whatever I, I i didn't put any limitations on it sure and there may be people who are amateurs that are like oh man i'm i i, I won and i'm gonna be a spawn i'm gonna be a spawn cover artist right uh cool uh, and and so i don't know i just thought it'd be fun that the people who have supported me and maybe grab a little bit of inspiration from what we do or what I do um, can enter and, and get, I mean, I would have done it. Like, what are you talking about? When I was trying to break in, if somebody said, Hey, do your Wolverine cover and you might get to on the cover of Wolverine shit, I would have done 10 of them. Right. Done. Um, so we're going to do that. I think it's just, again, just tip, a tip of the hat. Sometimes I think you need to tip the hat to the retailers. And I think that sometimes you need to tip your hat to the to the loyal base. And this is a way of doing it. I also have an idea because this one is, you can sort of say, well, if you're not an artist, you can't really enter, right? Sure. But I have this idea. I just, I'm just sort of silly enough to think that like everybody can draw something functional with a little bit of guidance uh, that I want to do one that's actually even bigger than that, right? <laughs> that, that uh, you know, maybe turn to the stores and say, okay, I need you to pick two people from your stores. One, what are your favorite artists who comes in or whatever? Show me that one. And then two, do a random one. And I don't care who they are. Just do a random one. And whoever wins that random one, again, I'll eventually get to the final person uh, who will pick the winner of the random, that that I see how good their art skills are. Like for you, you might not be able to draw, but if but if I sort of sort of help guide you just a little bit, I think you can get something sort of functional on the page. And then I'm gonna ink the shit out of you. I'm gonna ink you and I'm gonna make you look like as good as you can be. And then I'm gonna put a professional colorist on you. And all of a sudden, we're going to take somebody who's an accountant and and they're going to be a cover artist one time, right? Again, wouldn't want to do it on a steady basis because the skill set's not going to quite be there. On a, sure. but I, think, I think I can get there. I've done it before in the past where I've taken artwork that is a little bit ay 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 and I just go in there and I just ink it, right? And then it's like, and it kind of looks okay. So I, I think I can do that for my wife. So why not do it for somebody who's just a fan of Spawn, not necessarily an, a wannabe artist fan of Spawn. So, right. Uh, anyway, we're, we're hoping to engage with uh, the fans a little bit this year. Have have, have some fun. Uh, Todd, I love talking to you, man. You, you, I'm a Todd McFarland loyalist. Yeah, McFar if you were to see my, my, in my office, how many, stacks of uh mcfarland toys i have just just not even in shelves yet because i'm waiting for my ne next shelf to come man it's 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 crazy but you're putting out some of the best product from comics toys you're doing it all man and i can't wait for this spawn movie i really can't and congratulations on all the success i, I really appreciate it and and i love talking to you every single time i get a chance thanks todd yeah no i pre appreciate you giving us the time again every now and then you know the you know i can't say that every month 
we have something sort of a big deal, right? But there, there are moments, again, here's the upside of doing something for a long time that you create these sort of interesting events, moments, and, and naturally uh, anniversaries, right? So January, J- January, you know, the FOCs have to come in, which is the orders from the retailers for 350. So 350 comes out in February. And just the sort of that sort of buzz sort of hits, then officially, it was February 30 years ago when sure. I went to my very first toy fair, right? And so then that one starts, right? And then you go, oh, now we're coming out with a couple of number one issues as we mentioned about before. I think the first one's going to be Sam and Twitch, which it, I, again, for people who want something a little urban, it looks like a film. It's really spectacular. Um, and so we've got these issue number ones, that are, you know, and there's going to be a wide variety of them. So you can pick the ones you want. I don't assume everybody's going to buy all of them, right? Just like everybody doesn't buy every Marvel or every DC. Uh, and 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 next thing you know, the year has gone by and you've had seven, eight moments that you can talk about. And I, so I appreciate uh, people like you giving us a chance to illuminate some of those. And then uh, every day, I appreciate the people who give us their hard-earned money. Right? Uh, listen, I, I, I'm a, I'm a fan. And look, Sam, Sam and Twitch... I'm excited about that because uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's case files. It's going to be like a noir, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, see, that's right up my alley, Todd. That is right up my alley. So thank you so much, man. I I appreciate everything you do, man. I I really do. And I'd love to chat with you again and uh, just kind of shoot the shit, man, because I I love everything you do. Okay. Well, I appreciate appreciate you being out there. Again, the people who got to get the the gospel out there, you guys are providing a great service. I, 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 None of us should get too high on our horse um, because it's really a team effort here, right? That we have to create, you've got the companies, you've got the retailers, you've got people like yourself that have to sort of get people inspired and, and have the knowledge of what they're, and then you've got the consumers that pick and chew. All of us have to be part of the equation. Neither one of us can be sort of the, the king of any of it, right? Um, so we're all, we're all tied to each other, uh, which means I think we should have a, a, a healthy respect for one another. Um, because without, without one of those pieces of the chain, it falls apart, right? It falls apart. We saw it with the, during the pandemic, during the sure. supply chain, right? You like, and I know exactly how that works, right? You, you've got your chain. And if one thing happens, you don't have enough dock workers to unload boats. It doesn't matter that you can build it and it doesn't matter that you can truck it. You can't get it off the boat. And so it shuts down everything. I, I, I tend to think that our industry is the same way that from consumer and fan all the way to us who actually sort of begin the process and make it, we're all relying on each other. So I'm, I'm thankful for everybody that's out there. 